What's going on guys? Welcome back into the channel. Today we are going to be revisiting salary cap. It's been a while since I've specifically done a salary related video in Madden, but today I think that it's pretty prudent that we cover some of the most important tips, the most basic concepts of cutting salary cap in Madden and we're going to be on Madden 21 today um, but this is going to be your general guide for the basics to cutting salary cap in Madden. So first things first, whenever you hop into a franchise mode, we want to talk about the easiest ways to view salaries for a player. A lot of people will either look at their lineup screen or their roster screen and click into a player. There are a couple of different ways to actually view a player's salary, but these aren't the most efficient ways to actually do that. You know, going to the overview, looking at stats and contracts and, and looking at their contract is not the most efficient way to do it. Um, going specifically to your roster and looking at the the salary numbers that are there is not the most efficient way to view your player's salary looking at things like this however there is one screen that is going to have all of the information that you need. So whenever you're in a franchise mode and you hop in first press R1 and go over to the team tab and go to my team every single time this is where you're going to want to go click on my team and go down to the salaries tab this is exactly where you're going to find all of the imp important information regarding the salaries for a specific player in madden now like i said this is just going to be covering the basics so we're not really going to talk about future years or anything like that we're going to talk about right here right now how can i cut salary cap space to get my team into a position where i can sign players trade players make moves do all the various different things that i want to do to actually make this a functioning franchise and these are the things that teams have to do in the real life nfl now there are some options that are not available to us as managers of a franchise in madden we can't restructure contracts and things like that unless you go in and you know have commissioner powers to edit those things generally speaking there are only certain ways that you can get rid of cap space and that is by removing players that have bad contracts from your team and so first and foremost there is a column here that is going to tell you everything you need which is the savings column which is a very handy tool to have but I want to tell you guys what the savings column is telling you because it might be a little bit confusing how these things work so what you're gonna do you're going to go to your current year salary which would be 2021 in this case the most recent salary it'll show you the out years here 2021 22 23 24 25 you don't need to pay attention to 22 23 24 or 25 all that much realistically what you need to do is you need to look at the coming year which is 2021 look at your salary hit and then look at the penalty that that player has and the difference of those two things is essentially how much money you're going to get back if you cut that player which comes out to the player savings number now why is this the way that it is so essentially what happens whenever you cut a player you automatically gain back their entire salary cap hit so if i cut jj watt for example i gain back 17 and a half million dollars to my cap however you have that cap penalty number up at the top which is subtracted from your overall salary cap space so let's talk about that for a second so your overall salary cap space is going to be what the salary cap says it is so 222 million dollars less your salaries less your cap penalty and less your rookie reserve so if you take all of those things combined you're going to end up in this case with a negative cap situation you can see that we have negative 9.13 million dollars in cap space um, but realistically what's happening there is there's a little bit of a calcul weird calculation going on because it's not registering the 2021 cap space yet uh, so Realistically, it is the, the 2021 cap space minus your salaries that you're paying out minus your cap penalty and then minus your rookie reserve that is going to come out to how much cap space you actually have. So that's really important to understand is that you can have a cap penalty that is going to be subtracting from what you have available. And then in addition to that, you also have to know that you have that rookie reserve amount coming out of your salary space because that is reserved for the rookies that you're going to be drafting, how much money you're going to be paying those players once you draft them based on where your draft picks are 
are at. That money can fluctuate depending on where your draft picks are at, how many draft picks you have, and things like that. So that's extremely important to know. Let's go ahead and jump back to the player's salary, the penalty versus their salary, and take a look at what's going on here. So very first and foremost, you're going to want to look for the players that have the biggest difference between their salary cap hit and their penalty. So J.J. Watt is a perfect example here. He has a huge difference between his salary cap hit and his penalty. He, in fact, has no penalty. So I will take no negative money uh, off of my salary cap in order to cut him. I will gain $17.5 million back, and I will have none subtracted from my cap space. But another way to look at this is let's say that I cut, um, I don't know, let's say that I cut Gary on Conley, for example. His the way that his contract would work out is I would save $18.1 million in money in salary cap space. However, I would then gain a $9.06 million penalty. So those two numbers subtract out and the net savings is 9.06 9.06 million. So I would have 9.06 million to spend. This penalty number is taken up. It is automatically deducted from my salary cap and there's nothing that you can do about that. So let's show you guys at least how this works in fundamental operations. So let's say we cut JJ Watt for example. You know, the Texans cut him in real life. They want to move on from him. You guys can see that uh, that is going to, and it doesn't seem like it has actually registered yet, so I might have to move forward a, a week for it to actually register, but that is going to save us $17.5 million in cap space. And actually, that might not have worked out properly because he might not have been, there we go. So cap space is now up from negative to $8.37 million. All I had to do was click out of the screen to actually show you guys the change. So as you guys can see, that netted us that 15 I might be misremembering the number, million dollar cap penalty change. Now the other thing that you're going to want to do here to save money is you can do this a couple of different ways. What I like to do is I like to sort by the savings number and I sort by the most savings that I can get by cutting a player. Okay, but the thing that you have to understand is that you also have to balance this with what that player brings to the team. So yes, I would get $12 million in savings back from cutting Brandon Cooks. That's fantastic. If I really needed to save money, I could cut him, save $12 million, and utilize that elsewhere. However, he is an 86 overall, and he probably provides quite a bit of value to the team. So you have to weigh what that player's overall is versus how much money you're going to save in cutting that player. And so this is where Vernon Hargraves is a excellent example of what you are specifically looking for. You're specifically looking for players that will save you a lot of money, but are not really going to contribute much to the team. And so this is the best way to cut cap space is, like I said, this is an offset between their salary cap and then a low penalty. And so the biggest difference here, which comes out to be this savings number, is what's going to save you money. So Hargraves is only a 73 overall. He's 26 years old, so he's probably not going to develop all that much and if I really wanted to save money cutting Vernon Hargraves is the perfect way to do that these are the players that you're specifically looking for you want to go to the salaries tab and at the very least sort by this savings number to find out who's going to save you money and so I'm going to bypass Cooks I'm going to bypass Fuller because they add quite a bit of value to the team and then I'm going to make a judgment call okay well Gary Young Conley's a 78 overall maybe he adds a bit of value let's move on from him then we take a look at a 71 overall that is going to net me seven and a half million dollars in cap space to be able to spend on other things. So I'm going to go ahead and cut Whitney Merciless. That is the type of strategy that you guys want to have is you want to balance, you know, how much is this player actually going to contribute to the team and how much are they actually costing me? How much can I save money? You know, a great way to think about it is, okay, if I cut Nick Martin, I believe his name is Nick. If I cut Nick Martin here at center, I'm going to save $6.25 million in cap. Again, that's the difference between their salary and their penalty because this is positive money that you save. This is money taken out of your pocket, your penalty. So I'm going to save $6.25 million in cap space. Can I use that $6.25 million to sign somebody better than Nick Martin? 
More than likely, the answer is yes. And so that is where your decision-making process comes in. You know, am I, if I saved $9 million on Gary and Conley, could I get another corner for less than $9 million? That's maybe a little bit more iffy. But Nick Martin is a resounding yes. I could absolutely get a center that is better than a 70 overall for, you know, $6 million in savings. And so you go through and you want to, to like I said, sort by the savings number and find out what's going to save you money. The best way that I find as well to save some money is sorting by the players that have zero penalty because these are the guys that aren't going to negatively affect your cap situation at all if you cut them. And so very often you might find a guy that has a sizable contract here that has zero penalty that could, you know, really save your team some money. So again, you come to some guys like like Brandon Cooks, Will Fuller that have no penalty that could save you a sizable chunk of money if you chose to part ways with them. But then I come to a guy like uh, David Johnson or a guy like Fulton here, three and a half million dollars being paid out to a 67 overall. I think I could get a 67 overall for a much better price on the market. I'm going to go ahead and, ki and kick that guy off the team and save myself a bit of money and essentially just clear out that cap space to be able to utilize for better players, for other players, for other positions, whatever you might have it at. Uh, and so as you guys can see, after making all those cuts, I'm now up to $44.6 million in cap space. So that is the basics. I mean, the basics, basics of cutting players in Madden and, and cutting cap space. Now, like I said, this can get more complicated when you start to get into players that are higher overalls. This can get more complicated whenever you start to get into long-term contracts that you might want to trade. And this is why the Texans are potentially in a really poor situation in real life because, yeah, I just saved $44.6 million in cap space by making all those cuts. But still, once I trade away... Deshaun Watson, I'm going to still be negative in cap because this is how much it's going to cost me to get rid of him. It's going to give me a $50 million penalty or $66 million and free me up a tiny bit in cap space. So comparatively it offsets and I'm going to be down $50 million after that. And so it creates a really, really bad problem for the team to have to trade a player like that. And that's why you guys want to pay attention to your contracts as well. And you absolutely want to pay attention to your salaries page here before you go ahead and trade a player at the very least go and give it a short look to see if it is worthwhile to trade that player based on your salary cap situation like i said though this is the last thing that i want to comment on there are some players that will probably be on your team that can you know save you a lot of money by getting rid of them but you might not want to cut those players because of the value that they add and so my last point here is if you are still hurting for cap space like let's say we got rid of watson and we were still negative in cap space i would start to look at guys like brandon cooks and will fuller and i would say okay they would save me $12 million in space to get rid of them because they don't have a penalty. Their salary would all come back to me. They would make a lot of sense to get rid of. However, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to trade them. I'm going to get some type of value back for this player. Uh, you're obviously going to want to pay attention to the contract of the player that you're bringing over to the team and make sure that it's not too high and not going to hurt you salary cap wise. But that is one of the best ways to shed salary cap as well is to trade these players that would save you cap that, you know, you don't necessarily just want to cut outright like a Brandon Cooks and a Will Fuller. And so the Texans are a perfect example. I'm really glad that I picked them to utilize for this video. Uh, because trading away a Brandon Cooks could save your cap space. It could give you $12 million. It could turn your cap space positive after getting rid of Watson. That could really help your team out. That would be fantastic. Um, but the other thing to consider, like I said, is, you know, this change is going to be the same whether you cut the player or you trade the player. No matter what you do, and this is a really important point to make, whether you cut a player or you trade a player, you are inevitably going to take on the cap penalty for them. Whether you cut them or trade them, you will suffer that cap penalty. So if I cut or trade Deshaun Watson, I will take on a $66 million cap penalty. If I cut or trade Tunsil, I will take on a $25.4 million cap penalty. If I cut or trade Cooks, I will not take on a cap penalty and I will absolutely save money off of that transaction. And so that, like I said, is the basics 
of cutting cap space, cutting salary cap space in Madden. I really hope that this video is helpful to some people. I know that I've made some of these videos in the past. I've made them really long, probably too long. I've made them probably not as clear as they should be. Um, this should be very straightforward. I hope that I said this well enough and I made this concise enough for it to make sense to you guys and I hope that you guys can utilize this video as a tool to help you manage your cap space the best that you possibly can like I said if you got nothing else from this video the one thing to remember is to sort the savings tab and look at the savings tab and just base some decisions off of the savings tab because that is the number one tool that will allow you to make proper decisions in terms of what will save you money and what won't save you money. So hopefully this video was helpful to you. If this video was helpful to you, if this will be a good tool for you, if it'll be a good tool for your friends, maybe you guys can spread it around. In any case, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new here, make sure you guys hit that bell notification button, and make sure you guys leave your comments down below for anything else you guys could use help on. I'll see you guys in the next video, and I hope you guys have a good night.